Essentially what's happened is that we, a couple of decades ago, made a discovery um, uh, around the capacity to trigger a biological reaction that manufactures water. So let me give you a bit of an example of what I mean by that. Just, just imagine for an instant that we're in a gigantic scientific terrarium on this planet. It's a solar powered terrarium that operates all of its own systems to produce its own feed, its own food and its own fuel. It makes everything for itself. Solar panels are pretty topical around the world right now. One thing we know about solar panels is that they work when the sun's shining and there's an intermittent capture of energy and the intermittent capture of energy needs some kind of a backup battery. Somewhere in the system you need some kind of a battery that stores the energy so you can draw down on it at other times. Well, it's not so hard to imagine the green plants of the planet having solar panels and capturing sunlight. We know they make carbohydrates, so they make the feed, the, the fuel that, that feeds the animals and the plants and everything else in the system um, doing that. We've, ha we've had that um, uh, understanding for some time. But what we did was to look at that system in total and say, well, it looks like it's, it's running down. It looks like it's not getting enough energy because the capacity to produce the food, especially for the humans on the planet, seems to be declining. Um, simultaneously, there seems to be areas that are becoming drier around the planet. I don't think there's really any question that that's happening. Forgetting why, the fact is that it's happening. So what that said to us was that the solar panels are not really getting enough energy for the production of the system in total or the drawdown on the batteries. Now, when we looked at that pretty closely, what, you know, logically speaking, the green plants during the day um, capture the carbon they need, they make carbohydrates, and then later on in the system, as if, if, if we can look at it that way and look over a few million years, they actually become the basis for the hydrocarbons that we later draw down on. So the, f the food and the fuel are both coming from there. But at night time, they actually contribute negatively to that, they actually draw down on the system. So the fact that that can survive, a system based like that, means that somewhere else there must be a storage of energy on which that whole system is drawing in other times. We look for that. Imagine that in, in that system, there's a whole kingdom that we've not really focused on, a whole kingdom that's resident in every soil, in every body of water, in the atmosphere, everywhere, and that that kingdom draws energy in the same way, it has a different set of solar panels, but it still draws energy from the sun, it still draws energy the same way, captures that energy, manufactures more of the carbohydrates that are necessary in the whole system, but as an amazing byproduct, that it also manufactures water. Imagine that there's a kingdom on this planet that is able to oxidise hydrogen during its operation and from that oxidised hydrogen manufacture water from first principles in a soil environment anywhere on the planet. Now, if I tell you that that kingdom doesn't need the light that plants need, so it's not limited by the night and day cycle and can operate 24 hours a day, and that in fact that that kingdom is creating what we believe is the world's most important battery, and that's water. Moisture in a soil, moisture, water in a, in a collected body of water is an amazing storehouse of energy. And I don't mean that just as energy that can be stored once the water is made. I mean that as energy that is ensconced in the water when the water is made. There is a biological reaction that manufactures water while doing energy capture. Solar powered hydrogen mechanism built into the soil profile. We've spent 35 years making friends with that system. 
if you, if you want to increase um, carbon sequestration in plants, meaning surface ground cover and all of that um, uh, mechanism which would increase the drawdown of, of atmospheric carbon, then you're going to need water in the soil profile to do it. Uh, the way that we manage that, the way that we get to that point, is that we use um, organic material that's collected from the region and we incubate a catalyst in that organic material. So that can be anything. That can be trees, that can be sewerage waste, it can be any kind of food waste. Um, and we incubate the, the catalysts for this, the triggers for this reaction in the soil in that organic material and then apply it as a catalyst to the soil to stimulate that water manufacture downstream. Tell us about the recent pilot you ran in Aqaba. Having said that you can oxidise hydrogen, that's a pretty fantastic thing. Um, what it means, uh, in a practical sense, is, is incredibly relevant to, to Jordan and to other areas um, that have a depleted water supply. So what we did recently was to just, just um, uh, give a field demonstration of the real power of the, the triggered capacity that I'm talking about. When, when, there are, when there is a trigger of the natural reaction that's already present in the soil, which allows a, a, a um, replicated, self-growing um, biological reaction to work a bit faster and make a bit more water. Without water, you can't grow anything in, in terms of plants. So we tested both under an irrigated circumstance and then turned the irrigators off. What would happen to the grass? what would happen in the, in the environment if we're triggering this reaction, what would happen when there wasn't any irrigation and the surface temperatures were huge. Um, in, 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 in short, we were able to see grass grow even when it wasn't irrigated in, in incredibly high surface temperatures. We saw, at least for a short period of time, we saw that reaction happen. Um, we measured the, the soil moisture and saw a, a significant difference, um, like for like, side by side, in different areas where there was more water in the area where that reaction had been stimulated than there was in side by side without it. You can have a little more water between times when the heavens provide the water. If you can have a little more, you can do a whole lot more. A, a companion to the issue of managing hydrogen such that you're making water is that you're also managing hydrogen that might be um, involved in other um, issues in the soil. Salinity, uh, sodic alkali soils is one of those issues where the hydrogen is not really available for a period of time and therefore the soil becomes less and less uh, fertile. Uh, what, we, what we saw, which is incredibly encouraging for this region, uh, is that there, it is possible triggering that reaction which is, as I said, oxidising hydrogen. Clearly, that reaction is also able to source hydrogen and by doing that can, can um, uh, impact positively on the, the uh, sodic alkali capacity and, and also of the salinity of the soil. So that was a very encouraging outcome and we're looking to see how that can be deployed further.